Hello, my name is Brian Radio, and I'm a research and development engineer here at Sonnet Software. And today I'm going to talk about modeling anisotropic substrates. And this topic is really near and dear to me. I actually just finished my master's thesis on this very topic. Um, so first of all, what is anisotropy? So uh, let's imagine here that we've got an anisotropic dielectric brick. And we've got three different electric field vectors, one oriented in the y direction, one in the x direction, and one in the z direction. Um, if each one of those were to see a different permittivity, we would call that biaxial anisotropy. Uh, Sonnet is the only planar tool that can simulate uh, anisotropy. Sonnet does uniaxial anisotropy. So what that means is the x and y are going to have one permittivity, and we're going to call that epsilon horizontal and the z direction is going to have another separate permittivity and that's going to be vertical so really when we've got dielectrics we've got two different permittivities one for horizontal electric fields and one for vertical electric fields so what are the effects of anisotropy what happens if we don't include it in our designs so in the yellow here we see isotropic em simulation of an actual filter design and i want to thank david bates dielectric laboratories for this data so the yellow is uh, isotropic simulation, and the green is anisotropic simulation, and the black is measured. You can see that simulation has considerably better alignment when we use anisotropic dielectric constants uh, in simulation. Uh, so why is that? Uh, frankly, it's because of coupling and center frequency having different dependencies on permittivity. So the center frequency of this uh, uh, filter is going to be dependent on the vertical electric field uh, because it's dependent on the resonant frequencies of resonators in this filter and the bandwidth is going to be dependent on the coupling between resonators which is mostly horizontal electric field so we could actually go and sweep the isotropic dielectric constant from 0 to 10 uh, some all-inclusive range and some of them would have, some of the results would have the bandwidth right, and some would have the center frequency right, but none of them would have both. Uh, similarly, there's a, a big effects on signal integrity. So here we've got a 32 inch server backplane. So this is simulated on FR4 with isotropic dielectric constants. And it looks like it's good up to 10 gigahertz and maybe even beyond that. Um, so let's go ahead and put some actual uh, anisotropic data into the simulation. So we've got actual anisotropic dielectric constants for FR4, and we're going to put them in the simulation and see what happens. All of a sudden, our board looks like it's only good to maybe 3 or 4 gigahertz, just because of anisotropy. So that's some pretty significant effect. That's a pretty big deal. Okay, so we actually have a way at Sonnet to extract anisotropic dielectric constants. I'm going to go over that really quickly. But first, I'd like to uh, explain how you can uh, extract isotropic dielectric constants. So if we imagine that we've got a strip line resonator here, there's going to be a relation between the frequencies that this resonates at and the permittivity of the material. I've got the equation right here. You can check it out if you want to. But the point is, there's a direct relation between permittivity and the frequencies that this resonator will resonate at. So we could actually build this, measure the resonances, and determine the permittivity of the material. So we're going to build on that. And we're going to actually switch from a regular single resonator to a coupled line resonator. Um, and that's going to have two different resonances, an even mode resonance and an odd mode resonance. And each of those resonances has a different dependency on vertical and horizontal. And you can see that here. Uh, above, we've got the even mode. And that occurs when current is equal in magnitude in the same direction on both lines of the coupled resonator. And you can see electric fields primarily vertically oriented. Uh, similarly, we have the odd mode, which is when current is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And the current is primarily horizontally oriented. Now, it's not one-to-one. -one. It's not perfectly horizontal, and this isn't perfectly vertical. So we can actually do a calibration uh, with a bunch of simulation data, simulation in Sonnet, and use that to calibrate out the effects of even and odd mode permittivity and turn that into vertical and horizontal permittivity. 
Uh, so this is what the test setup looks like. We go and build a coupled line resonator. We test it in a metal fixture. As uh, you may be aware, Sonnet simulates in a, a shielded box. So this is our shielded box. And we can then hook it up to a network analyzer and measure it, use calibration data from simulation, and get permittivity out. We can also test versus temperature. This is a hot plate and a thermal couple setup. So this is what the extracted data looks like. So this is for FR4. Um, so this is an actual measured result for a real FR4 board. Inclusion of this can make or break designs and sign it. I mean, look at this. Vertical, we've got a constant of 4.54, and horizontal, we've got a constant of 3.26. So those are markedly different. Uh, we've got another material, uh, RO4350B. So this is a much more high-end material. The, the loss is much lower, and uh, there's much less dispersion, but it's it too is anisotropic. Uh, so vertical is 3.605, and horizontal is 3.227. So that's pretty pretty different as well. So even with a high-end material, we still need to be worried about this anisotropy. Uh, not all materials um, exhibit it, though. Um, so this is Taconic RF35A2. Uh, now this is kind of a special material. It has low ceramic and low fiberglass weave content. So the structural and loss properties might not be as good as some other materials. But since those are kind of the primary sources of anisotropy, we notice that it is a much more isotropic material to work with. Similarly, uh, there's some other effects that we can sort of roll into the permittivity tensor. For example, the edge profile. As the uh, edge gets uh, sharper, um, charge is more likely to uh, uh, stay there. Um, and so we can uh, model that by a change in the permittivity because it's going to change the field distributions. So let's do a, a quick example and see how easy it is to include uh, anisotropy in Sonnet. So there should be an example download file. If not, you can really do this with any Sonnet project that you have. So I'm going to double click and open this example, hairpin.son, and this just came from Sonnet's example browser. And I'm going to go to circuit dielectric layers. Okay, so we've got, this is a strip line filter, and we've got two layers of RT6002. So I'm going to double click this, and all I have to do is click this anisotropic box. And now I can select an XY permittivity and a Z permittivity. So let's go ahead and call this 3.3. .3. And then we can do it again for the top layer. Anisotropic 3.3. So here's our new stack up, and it shows we've got the two different permittivities, a horizontal permittivity and a vertical permittivity. And we can get this data with a technique that I just went over briefly. Just select OK, and hit save, and we're done. It's that easy. This circuit now has anisotropy included. So if you have the data, there's really no good reason not to use anisotropy. OK. So here's some results for uh, another filter with actual Illumina data that has been extracted with this technique. The pink is isotropic simulation data based on a data sheet value. And the purple is anisotropic permittivity as extracted by this technique. So this is a case where anisotropy could easily break this design. It's that important to account for. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, for low accuracy, inclusion of anisotropy is probably not that important. But for high accuracy situations, the inclusion is just absolutely critical. Uh, substrate vendors are now starting to do anisotropic measurement. We hope to see some data in data sheets soon. And if you're an interested vendor, we'll happily work with you. And similarly, designers can now start using anisotropy uh, in their designs for high accuracy situations. Thank you.